I'm delighted to be joined by the remarkable Harry Leslie Smith, a 91-year-old Royal Air Force veteran who hit the headlines last month when he delivered an impassioned speech at the Labour Party conference in Manchester. And Harry, I don't think anybody will ever forget your, your remarkable closing line, which was, Mr Cameron, keep your mitts off my NHS. Perhaps you could explain a little bit about why is the NHS such an important institution for you? I think because of the fact I grew up without any health service. I didn't see a doctor in my lifetime until I was uh, in the Air Force. I had my minor problems, so I would have been 18 or 20 years old before I saw a doctor. And how I managed to escape uh, all the scratches and bangs and, and ordinary ailments of childhood, I don't ever know. I guess it must have been my genes that were helping me along the, the track. But no, it's, uh, it's, it's so essential. Uh, we cannot all be uh, high wage earners. Uh, there are people in society who struggle from pay check to pay check. And if they have an illness, they're in the same boat that I was as a child, you know. So it's 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 absolutely impossible to do without this service. And for the government to say it's costing too much money, we have to cut back. It's irresponsible, I think. Maybe if they tried getting some of the super wealthy people in this country to pay their share of taxes, we wouldn't have to be concerned about the NHS. In the book, Harry's Last Stand, I mean, it's a very, very human story. And I guess there will be young people who read that who are absolutely shocked to hear how how tough and you know your own your own childhood was. So perhaps maybe you could tell us how, how did your um, you know your young life growing up during the Great Depression compare with how young people live today? I, I don't think today any child starts work at seven as I did, but they still have the same hunger, the same need to feel that they were part they're part of life and part of the country and not forever scrambling uh, to uh, put food on the table, you know. The government doesn't seem to realise that these, these young people today are the people possibly who might be uh, important people in later life and that we all, we, we all need to have opportunities and if you're continually hungry and you're struggling and you see your parents unhappy because uh, just like my parents what's going to happen love only lasts as long as uh, there is enough money to keep things rolling I guess it must be quite harrowing really to see after you know you experienced a, a period in which political change came for the good but did you ever did you ever think you'd live in an age again when in Britain we'd have families visiting food banks and you know such levels of child, child poverty and malnourishment no no I never did and uh, what well, it, it, it seems somehow it starts off with one country bringing in certain rules and ideas and then another country takes up the same game and then another. So you've got uh, England, you've got uh, Canada, you've got Australia, New Zealand. They're all in the austerity class, you know. And the people are not happy at all. But uh, the, uh, I have a feeling somehow that the government is not anymore run for the people, by the people. 
the, the people who we call our Prime Ministers and uh, MPs are mere puppets to the industrialists who are pulling their strings. Did your experience with the, uh, the Labour Party at the, at the recent conference, I mean, did you get the impression that the, you know, the current leadership of the Labour, Labour Party is ready to make a separation from that? Or, you know, do you trust Ed Miliband and Ed Balls to sort of make, make a clean break and represent the people? No, no, unfortunately I don't anymore. I think it's going to boil down to another coalition and we'll be back on the same track again. It's, uh, it's sad that the 7,000 people who were in the oratorium there uh, were actually full of enthusiasm, enthusiasm, but they don't make a government 7,000 people. We've seen perhaps in the rise of UKIP that there is at least space for another, you know, another party to to, to come to the fore, perhaps it's not the party of your choice, but does that fill you with any sense of hope that maybe on, on the left that there might be something radical to emerge? Or I'm hoping, I'm, uh, I'm going to be around for the next election and uh, in the meantime I, I'm going to try to get people to to get out and vote, even if it's only to spoil the ballot. Because uh, if, if everyone in England turned out and spoiled the ballot, and the government was put in with 30,000 or whatever number of people who voted for the government, and the rest are uh, all against them. They're going to see the light in the, on the, in the tunnel, you know. Mm. And I think it might make a big difference to mm. who is going to run this country. Mm -hmm. You get someone like Russell Brand, who is now advocating revolution, for God's sake. But, uh, how, how can anyone recommend something like that? A revolution without voting? Yeah. Yeah, and uh, don't, don't they realise that revolution also, it's, it, it's not just struggle and strive, it's pitting one person against another. And uh, it's, it's so easy for these people who have 20 million pounds in the bank uh, to suggest that we should start tearing into each other's throat because they, they damn well know that they can hop on a plane or a helicopter and mm -hmm. bugger off if things get too rough, you know. <laughs> but uh, I think you should stick to comedy, that's very... He, he's all right at comedy. <laughs> so change has to be democratic is your message? <laughs> yes, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, I, I find that age is creeping up on me. I can't seem to coordinate my yeah. thoughts sometimes. Not at all, Harry has been very... <laughs> you can coordinate them better than I can coordinate mine. And I'm, uh, you've got 60 years on me. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> you get, you get, you're an old hand at this media game now. I don't think I've ever been old. <laughs> I always face everyone with trepidation. <laughs>